bit rolling. And just clap. Did you know that if more of us were to harvest a white-tailed deer, legally with all the right permits and regulations, of course, that our country's forests would be better off? Hear me out. I'm Charles Post coming to you live from the Arctic. I'm Hip Camp's resident ecologist, and today we're gonna to be digging into some surprising facts about our world as you don't know it yet. Deer are threatening America's forests, specifically white-tailed deer. There are some 30 million individuals scattered across the country, thriving in our parks, in our backyards, in our urban environments, our mountains and wilderness areas. White-tailed deer are incredibly plastic, which means they're flexible and adaptable. There are a few checks that are balancing white-tailed deer population in today's world. Apex predators don't really play a big role anymore. There are just not enough of them to have an impact across our urban and suburban environments or across places where apex predators just don't have the elbow room to do what they do, which is be a predator. In a modern world, that's just not realistic across much of the country. As a hunter, if it's something that you're interested in, and of course you wanna have the right permits and have the right training and have the right mindset when you go on this type of adventure, but if that's for you or if you're curious, you can actually have a role in the ecosystem and in the food web, just like a wolf would or a bear. And so the problem with this is that when you have these kind of unchecked white-tailed deer populations, they're going into the forest, they're going into these plant communities where they where they live, and they're kind of crushing these understory plants, these flowers. These are the places where pollinators find habitat and food. These are where songbirds nest and where they make a living. When a white-tailed deer can go about its business completely free of worry about predation, there's not wolves anymore in downtown Minneapolis. So these deer just go about their day just doing their thing and they eat and they eat and they reproduce. And in time, these forest communities struggle. They might look like they're thriving. We go on a hike, we see these huge trees, we can climb, we can wrap our arms around. The problem is the next generation of trees. These are the tiny trees you might miss, the ones you might step over. These are the trees that will climb into the canopy and replace these older trees as they die. And when these small trees are getting eaten to the bare earth by these white-tailed deer, we lose that next generation. And when these understory communities of plants and shrubs, flowers and whatnot, they are getting overgrazed, then we lose a lot of important habitat for insects and songbirds. And so the problem is we have too many deer and not enough pressures keeping these populations down. And so that's where you come in. Hunting can be a really effective way for you to plug back into that ecosystem, into the food web, and have a role in shaping it. Not only is it putting protein locally sourced that you have a hand in on your table, but it's also giving you a chance to connect with these systems that exist around us. We're not separate from nature, we're part of it. And hunting could be a really great way for you to get back into this natural order of things. And again, I totally respect the fact it's not for everybody, so to each their own. But if it's something you're considering, it could be a really great way to connect with nature. And these... So on your next hip camp adventure, consider visiting a place like Idaho or Montana or Wyoming. These are places that have the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem. And what's so cool about the Greater Yellowstone is that this is a place where apex predators still thrive. Grizzly bears and black bears, mountain lions and wolves are still reigning supreme. They still do what they've always done, which is keep prey populations like white-tailed deer in check. And so this is a great place to almost go back in time and see nature in its purest form. 